Hello everybody. Before I start, I'm just going to give people an opportunity to sign in to the live video that we're doing right now. Feel free to share the video. <clears throat> As I say, we'll be going, um, we'll be starting the, the, the workshop very shortly. Just going to wait for people to sign on, just give everybody a chance to to, um, to listen and, and learn from what we have to go through. I've estimated about an hour. But it's okay if we go over as well. I don't mind. I'm happy to give up my time and talk about permaculture. Feel free to share the video. On your on your page, that would be really really helpful. Um, also, to give other people an opportunity to learn more about permaculture. In this video, we'll be talking about what, what to do in your garden. Some practical things that you can do. We'll be talking about what is pig? What is permaculture? Site observations? Site structure? plants and how to screen them, so how to choose the best plants, and resources as well. So I'm just going to give people a chance to log in, log on. Feel free to share. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, like I say, feel free to share with your friends. And um, yeah, just to share the message of permaculture. And, and in this video, it's a free workshop. So I'll be talking about things that you can do your garden permaculture style so what is pig 
PIG is, it stands for Permaculture Inspiration Gathering. We host courses and gatherings and um, starting to host workshops. Um, we're trying to do as much free stuff as we can as well. Um, Permaculture Inspiration Gathering is basically started with um, monthly gatherings where we talk about permaculture, where we teach it, inspire and connect. So we teach, inspire and connect. And these are kind of the core values of PIG. To teach permaculture, to inspire regenerative action and to connect the human network. Permaculture is is really needed now, especially, I mean, you've heard it all before, right? Um, global warming and loss of forests, of jungles, soil erosion, etc., etc., etc. I mean, the list goes on. Um, and permaculture, I feel, is a, a practical um, a, a practical solution to the issues we face. The vision for PIG is to host regular PIG gatherings in every major city and town in the UK. So what is permaculture? Permaculture is, in a nutshell, learning from natural abundant ecosystems and altering them for human needs. There is also a lot of other um, definitions of permaculture so feel free to have a look and choose the best one that you feel suits um, suits the ethos and what permaculture is trying to do also says it in the name as well permaculture so permanent cultures um, and that refers to um, cultures that are uh, sustainable and resilient rather than the sort of cultures we have today where, for example, um, in industrial farming, you have a thing called monocultures, which is something that we use a lot today. And that is where you have one species of plant that is in abundance and it lacks diversity. So it lacks other plants that are uh, incorporated into the system. And this means that the that particular system, the monoculture system, is not resilient, and the reason for that is because the um, because it the the species takes a single nutrient from the soil and doesn't give that single nutrient nutrient back, and also is very vulnerable to pests and diseases. Whereas when you have a polyculture which is the opposite to monoculture. Um, this is where you have diversity and because you have so much diversity, um, all your crop is not going to die from one disease because um, some are more resistant to other de diseases, etc. We'll talk about that in more videos. Um, the permaculture was originally um, uh, I'm going to say invented by Bill Mollison and David Holbrum. Uh, the thing is, permaculture has been around for many, many years. There's examples of um, Aboriginals using uh, permaculture techniques and Native Americans, etc. However, in um, around 1970s, uh, Bill and David um, created what we would call the modern permaculture. They they retermed it permaculture, and um, and yeah, we'll we'll talk more about what permaculture is in in other videos. I think I've already done a YouTube video about it as well, so I'll link my YouTube in the description as well. Um, the different aspects of permaculture, I would personally say, are the permaculture principles, and there's 12 of them. Uh, the ethics, which are earth care, people care, and fair share. And the design, 
of permaculture, which include methods and processes. So basically the, the principles and the ethics are there to guide us. So ethics are obviously a, a moral thing. Uh, principles are more like uh, effective and um, they help with uh, aspects of the design. And the design is about the methods and processes, which is um, basically in permaculture design, we are like uh, engineers, uh, technical engineers. And what I mean by this is that we have our processes that we go through to make sure our designs are the the best we we can do basically so they're they're about making conscious de decisions rather than going straight in and making mistakes and harming the environment so first i'm going to talk about site observations so the site base map is the first thing that you would you would do as you're walking around the site um your your site at home specifically you, you you draw a base map of it and this gives you something to work on right so you can then plan out your ideas etc um a little tip is that if you um there's a way to measure the average distance of your pace but you can just say your you can average your pace out at like one meter so every time you take a step it's one meter um, and then that will give you an estimated measurement of your base map. From there we can look at overlays. Uh, overlays are something you put over your base map to understand different aspects of your site. So for example, example sun and shade. So now we're looking at how the sun moves across your site and where are the shady parts and where are the sunny parts. And these, these overlays are here to help you be able to position your plants in a way that they're gonna best survive and help the environment. The next overlay is wind. So this will tell us where the wind's coming from and um, some solutions to a very windy area could be uh, that you need a windbreak and windbreak are like trees, hedgerows, etc. Um, another thing to look at here as well is how the heat is, is rising because heat rises, right? So if you're on a hill, for example, and you're, you're like three quarters of the way up the hill and you're in a valley, um, the heat from bottom of the valley will rise at night right and the cold air will cool and it will go down um, and this can create frost pockets and equally um, opposite to that is uh, like a microclimate so um, warm climate so that sorry they're both microclimates so you get frost pockets and you get um, heat pockets and these are microclimates. These create climates that um, plants that that might be different from the the climate that you're in. If that makes sense. Um, another overlay you can do is water. How water flows down the site. From here we can learn to direct the water in a way that is effective. So for example, if you're in a very dry country, you, you can um, manipulate the, how the water runs through your land so that you're accumulating all of the water that you can or as much water as you can so that your plants get watered. There's ways to water your plants without standing out in the garden with a hose. You can let the rain do it, but the issue is that um, if you don't if you don't uh, think about where the water is going, uh, how the water is running on your site, 
um, then you're not going to have an effective site and you're going to be doing a lot more work than necessary. The solution to this is swells, swales, so look up swales. Another thing to consider is design lines when we're doing our site observation and base map. Is that these are basic things. So the design lines is about where the most traffic is on your site. So do you have, so traffic can be cars, but it can also be people and it can be animals. So how do, we, how do people, animals and cars, if your site is that big, um, how do they move across your site? And then altering our site, taking that into consideration when we are thinking of ideas and what to plan. Soil test is also extremely important. Um, doing a soil test means that you're going to know the pH of the soil. Um, and you're also going to know if it's, if it's clay or if it's sandy or if it's somewhere in between. Um, and what that helps you do is that helps you choose the right plants that are necessary uh, for your site. For example, there's no point having a plant on your site that loves acidic soil, um, but your site is alkaline soil. So do you see how that's not gonna work? or that's going to cause a lot of stress on the plant. So it's probably the wrong plant for your site. There is ways to manipulate your soil. Um, for example, if your soil is too acidic, you can add lime. You could run your water through limestones and this would help the soil become less acidic. So the next slide I want to talk about is site structure. This is all about the, the materials, the kind of the building, um, uh, yeah, structures to your site. So growing method, thinking about what kind of method of growing you want to do. So if you do a no dig, you actually probably don't need any um, any barriers around your beds. You don't even need raised beds. You can do this straight on the ground. So it's actually a really cost-effective method. It's a method that I'm doing in my garden and you can basically use cardboard, horse manure, any, any type of manure really, um, and mix that with hay, with soil. And, and then if you wanted, you can also add another layer. So you can do that a kind of, it's called lasagna, no dig beds where you add the compost, the manure, the soil, the hay, any organic matter really, and then add another layer of cardboard and then do exactly the same on top. Vertical growing, this is growing um, across uh, structures that are, um, that are rising in the air, so not on the ground. And you can do this through aquaponics or you could um, put soil into your and what whatever you're using to hold the plants up. For example, um, I I'm using um, the do you know the pipes that you have for trees. So for young saplings, you've got these plastic pipes, and at the moment we've got a lot that has been uh, wasted or or um, they're going to be reused for saplings. Um, but I just thought I could use them for uh, vertical growing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stuff them with soil and then uh, drill holes, drill a load of circles in the pipe um, and then plant the plants into that. And yeah, that will allow me to raise the, the pipes to where I want them on a wall. Um, I'm actually going to do it in my cabin, um, at the back of my cabin. And, and yeah, and I'll be able to hang that and I'll be able to do different layers there. So salads, I'm gonna grow there because it's quite a shady area. And again, aquaponics, you can use that. Um, you can also use aquaponics in loads of different ways as well. I definitely recommend looking that up if you want to learn more about that. 
and any alternative spaces, so your rooftops, etc., um, that you can think of anywhere. If you if you need space, if you're lacking space, think about how can I make space? What what do I need? Um, is there something I need to buy? Is there some structure? Um, is there somebody else's garden I can use? And I think like that. So at this stage, we're just finding out how are we going to grow? What spaces have we got, etc. Pathways can be used in many different ways. So you can have uh, stone pathways, quite traditional, or you can have a um, bit more alternative pathways. For example, um, clover pathways. Clover is a nitrogen fixer. So what you're actually doing here is you're hitting two two birds with one stone, um, and you're you're healing the soil by giving it nitrogen and you're creating a lovely pathway um, that, yeah, that looks great. Um, but that, that pathway is vigorous as well because clover is a vigorous plant. So what we're talking about here now is using ground cover uh, to make pathways and a vigorous ground cover as well. <coughs> So greenhouses as well, are we going to be growing in greenhouses? Um, have you got greenhouses that you can use? And irrigation as well, I talked a little bit like about that in the last uh, slide, which was how are we going to add water to our site? Where does it come from and how is it going to move around our site? So the type of plants we're going to use So making a veg list, the first thing we're going to put on our list um, is what veg do I want? So this is working out now what kind of veg we're going to be growing. So we've talked about the observations, we've talked about the structure. So basically we've, we've gone through, um, we're, we're going through a process at the moment. Um, similar, this is a permaculture process, it's a very very simplistic version but it gives you an idea of um, the level of depth and um, of how a permaculture process is is gone through so that we can make the most um, conscious and best decisions for both ourselves and for the ecosystem so the first list we're going to create is what veg do I want to grow? So this is about you. This is about what you already eat. What veg works in your garden? So this is down to the pH of the soil, the soil conditions, the environmental conditions, um, the actual location, where it is, how it's positioned, And that's what it's going to look like. So you've got what veg do I want to grow? This is just an example, by the way. Um, these are not necessarily uh, would go well together. They're just examples. Um, so you can say, I want to grow leeks, carrots, parsnips, kale and potatoes. And your next list, um, this is about your garden. So what veg works in my garden? So again, down to pH conditions. <coughs> Um, and you can create sub lists. So what works in my garden is the leeks, the carrots, the parsnips and the kale. But for some reason, potatoes don't work in my garden. Where I used to live, um, it was in a, in a place in Dartmoor, that potatoes weren't uh, very good because they had, um, oh, I forget the disease that they had. They basically grew potatoes in abundance there in the war. And um, basically this this disease, I'll, I'll figure it out after, it might come to me as I talk about it. Um, it basically makes the leaves go yellow and it makes your potatoes mushy. Oh gosh, I can't remember what it's called. Maybe one of you guys know uh, what it's called if you do type it in the description because I completely forgot it's gone 
from my mind. Um, so in the what veg works in my garden, we're actually screening the veg that we want to grow to make sure it's right for the conditions of our landscape. Because if it's not right for our la landscape, then there's no point in growing uh, these ve the veg or the plant. Then on the right, something we haven't talked about yet is guilds. So guild creating. So a guild is a accumulation of plants that work well together. So accumulation of companion plants that work well together um, and are, are grouped into a, a certain environment. So not only do they work well together, but they're also positioned in a way that uh, are best suited for that environment. You know, so you you would put um, sections of these groups around your garden. Um, and yeah, they would be specific for that point in your garden. So the last slide is resources. So think about making a resource list. What do I have? What can I get for free? Anything else I need? And I assume this would be stuff that you need to pay for um, because you don't, yeah, you don't have it for free. You don't have it already and you can't get it for free. But going through this list actually minimizes um, the use of um, consumerism because we're looking at um, how can we use our our existing life at the moment? How can we use the stuff that we have that we've already gained for um, benefit? Like I was talking to you earlier about the the tree protection, the plastic tree protection pipes, and instead of throwing them away, I'm going to reuse them for vertical gardening. So yeah, we're here we're thinking about materials, workers, free trading with neighbors, tools, etc. So now we're thinking about things that can that can help us implement our design. So that's about it. I'm not actually sure what time it is. Wow, we went through that so quickly. I did not expect to go through that quickly. So maybe we actually have time for a Q and A. Um, if anybody wants to comment and ask some questions, I'll do it quite spontaneously. Um, it's okay if nobody has any questions. Um, on this page, by the way, I just want to talk to you about this. Um, so like I said, we have courses and gatherings that we do regularly. Our next up and coming gatherings are Glastonbury and that's tomorrow. So that'll be 6 p.m. till 9 p.m. The one after that is in Bristol and that's 6 p.m. till 9 p.m. as well on the 2nd of February. We also have courses coming up. So the first uh, course in um, in February is the two day introduction course at Avalon Priory in Glastonbury. So that's on the 12th of February to the 13th. And we also have a two day introduction course in Bridge Farm in Bristol. So yeah, I went through that super quick. I didn't realize I was um, going to be so quick. So please feel free to ask any questions.
Hey, Blight, yes. Yes, exactly, Blight, wow. Yes, thanks for that comment. Um, yeah, it was Blight. It really, it really got my potatoes, and I, I loved them potatoes. I mean, I spent all, um, yeah, all of the, the spring and summer tending to them, and yeah, my potatoes had Blight, and wow. We also had um, an allotment next to me, this is in Dartmoor, had heaps of um, blight as well and it just spread really quickly. Um, yeah, basically it goes like your leaves go like yellow and, um, and black and kind of looks like they've been burnt by the sun and then they kind of like wither and they kind of look real like dead and kind of curl over. Um, and also you got to be careful with putting that into your compost because then you keep the the microbes in the system if you put it in your compost so I'd, I'd recommend burning it actually um, yeah Awesome. Well, there's no more questions, it seems, but this video will be available um, online. So feel free to to ask any questions at any point and, and to share and come along to one of our events, one of our gatherings, our courses. Like I said, we've got the one in Glastonbury tomorrow, which we're super excited about. All the links are in the descriptions. Um, and yeah, happy to, happy to help wherever I can. Um, permaculture inspiration gathering is about, uh, hosting regular permaculture courses and gatherings. Our aim is to host these gatherings. So regular permaculture gatherings all around the UK in all the major cities and towns. The reason for this is to, to teach people about permaculture, to inspire people into regenerative action and to connect the human family. And it's important that we keep this momentum going so that we can heal, heal our environment. Yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, in tomorrow's gathering, we'll be talking about guilds. We'll talk more about that. And about planning, planning your permaculture garden. How to best create an environment which rejuvenates your garden, your ecosystem and gives you abundance because when you, when you choose to, to help mother nature, you choose plants that heal the ecosystem you're increasing the fertility of the soil and you're increasing the resilience of the system 
because you're choosing plants that work well together, plants that help each other in different ways, so some deter pests away from other plants, diseases, and and yeah, permaculture is is really important. <clears throat> it's why I'm why I'm here, why I'm doing this and sharing this with you. I really believe permaculture is something that needs to be brought into our way of life. It needs to be the normal. Because if it's not, then we'll continue um, this journey of consumerism, of destructive, um, creating a destructive environment or mentality. And really, um, in my mind, the way I understand how we farm or our way of, of um, achieving food results these days is mining. <clears throat> so we mine for our food and it's just a change of, of thought, it's a change of mentality from mining for our food to growing for our food. The reason why I say that is because uh, mining, um, basically with the monoculture, so as I was talking about earlier, the, the single species of plant extracts a nutrient from the soil. Let's say a common one is nitrogen. But there's nothing to put that nitrogen back into the soil. Except for the use of chemical fertilizers, which clearly do not work. So what happens is species extracts a nutrient from the soil, like the nitrogen. The, nit the, the plant is then harvested and that nitrogen is then taken away from the site so it's exactly like coal mine mining or like you know um, lithium mining where they they extract the material from the soil from the environment and they take it away and you put it somewhere else so that that specific area is then lacking in something and there's nothing to put it back that's why you see farmers having to lay their fields to rest, to give it a break. Permaculture offers a solution where we are growing for our food, meaning we are rejuvenating the environment for our food. It's not degenerative. It's regenerative. This means we're adding soil fertility. We're adding biodiversity. We're creating systems that are resilient. Systems that will last lifetimes rather than just a single harvest in a year, like annual, um, like annual production. Also, if you have any subjects you want me to talk about, 
more than happy to talk about them. And like I say, this video will be here um, if you do want to watch it. I'll make sure it stays online. And I also have many more videos on YouTube. And um, it's kind of the start of the, the pig journey. I'd really appreciate all your support. Um, and thank you for your support as well. This journey is, is my purpose, is why I'm here. To spread the permaculture knowledge and practices. To continue learning about it as well. Because a design is never complete. Once you finish a permaculture design, the the land has already changed, right? From the moment you started observing the land to the moment you finish the design, the land doesn't stay still, it changes. So this is about momentum, about keeping the momentum of the designs, re-evaluating, keeping the momentum of the pig gatherings so that we have a, we're having weekly meetings so that we're building our community we're creating a, a mycelium network for those who don't know mycelium is really important mycelium um, plants have a world wide web and it's actually underground this is where they trade you can trade nutrients through there talk to each other as well through this mycelium network and this is what we're creating right now the pig mycelium network maybe that's what I'll change the motto to <laughs> I want to talk about one more thing as well so we have a, a project in Africa called Kakuma refugee camp this is a permaculture project that was um, that that arose in my awareness um, through a guy named um, Saeed and he basically called out to me because he needed help with funding a permaculture project he had an idea um, to to teach to open up a school in the refugee camp <coughs> teaching the community how to grow their own food because in Kakuma refugee camp there's about 500,000 people that are in lack of food and water and money and jobs And through permaculture, we can rem remove food scarcity and we can heal their environment. So their environment is very dusty, it's very desert-like. And so Saeed came to me with this idea and I've been, we've been working together um, and he's been doing really well. We've raised a lot of money and we've bought a lot of tools for for the camp, for the for the permaculture project. And he continues to do great work. So if you look at the description and scroll right to the bottom, you'll see Kakuma Refugee Camp Permaculture Project and there's a GoFundMe page. If you feel the calling to donate please feel free to do so. And again, feel free to share. It's a beautiful cause and um, he's really doing great things in the world. We also have pig groups as well. So we have the pig Facebook group and the Telegram group, which are 
in the descriptions. And I've also said in the description of this video, <coughs> this is a free workshop, however, if you do feel the call to donate, it would really help get this project moving forwards. PIG is all about rejuvenating our ecosystems and connecting communities to make it happen now. And I've left my bank details as well if you would like to donate. Awesome. Well, have a wonderful evening and um, and yeah, feel free to ask any questions. And if you want me to talk about any subject of permaculture, feel free to join our groups and share this video. And much love. Have a great evening.